Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, yeah. welcome. Welcome back. We're uh, going to do uh, another episode of the Cider Tales podcast. Yeah. And uh, what's happened since last week? A lot of things. Oh, weather change. Cold, hot, warm, crazy, windy, dry. Crazy um, stuff. In two days, and the guns will be blazing for me with, with the kids. Oh, that's right. That's um, right. Cousins Forever chapter, we're having our annual youth hunt, and I think we have probably a dozen kids signed up. I wish it was 30, but dozens a good uh that's super a good number and participation's big. They're gonna get a couple guns. We have a sponsor comes in, pays for all the pizza. You know, it's it's gonna be a great event. And then we one more week after that, we finally get to carry a gun. I'm excited. <laughs> well, you know. I don't know about carrying a gun, but I try. Well, I try, you know, no, um, you know, you get used to guiding and without it, but, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take my, uh, I'll take my turn at trying to get some wild birds like, uh, like you do. I obviously probably won't get out as many times as you do. I'm going to try to, uh, get in the knees taken care of tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, hopefully that'll get me, uh, going for the season. I'll get out there again. Uh, a couple of quick things too. Um, kinetic dog food, and you've met these guys, mm -hmm. uh, as, as you know, anybody has seen our, and our video series called Setter Tales from, uh, a few years back, um, knows kinetic dog food was very, uh, uh, big and influential in that. And they were our sponsor, one of our uh, big corporate sponsors that, uh, helped us out with that. And they are now on board, uh, sponsoring podcast as of, uh, a week or so ago. So. Uh, that's uh, that's really going to be fun. We're going to do some things with them. Uh, we're trying to work out some details of uh, what what we're going to do, but uh, it's good to have those guys on board. They were down at the Heroes Hunt. They helped support that uh, as a as a kinetic dog food. They've been involved in that for several years, so they're going to be on board. You'll be seeing more about that. I think we're going to have probably uh, John Howard from Kinetic on here soon, here in the next week or two. And uh, uh, that's uh, that's going to be great. Also, um, uh, we have a gentleman over in Ireland. If you remember, I went to Ireland in 2019, and you know we had some Ireland guys that came here and hunted with us. You yep. and I both last fall, about a year ago, and actually hunted up on your property. And uh, anyway, a gentleman over there has become uh, one of our patrons. He signed up to be a monthly sponsor of the show, the podcast, and and uh, Rory O'Flaherty over there in Ireland. So, uh, Rory, uh, appreciate your, uh, support and, uh, hopefully you'll uh, enjoy the podcasts that come uh, here in the near future. And, yeah, we, uh, we appreciate everybody that helps us and, yeah. and, and Rory, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thanks to the guys at kinetic and, and, uh, I started feeding their food a couple of years ago and, and, uh, I'm glad I have, we have them on board cause I, I'm just happy with what I've done. I've, I've changed a lot of different things and, diets and and as much as i you know run the dogs and and uh i keep them rolling and, and this this keeps them going and and uh and the cleanup's not so bad and i don't have yeah. to feed so much and well and as you know we uh if, if people are going to sponsor the things we're doing we we believe in the product yeah. we're using it so yeah. we're not gonna we're not gonna promote anything that we're not using ourselves and we both feed kinetic i've fed that for i don't know years now so Anyway, uh, there's a lot of good foods out there, but Kinetic, if you're looking for uh, a good uh, food for your for your upland dog or any kind of canine athlete, check them out. And uh, they, their website is uh, is pretty cool. Um, they just they just uh, got hooked up with Tractor Supply too, so that's right. They and did. that's going to be big. They can go around. You can go around to all the Tractor Supplies, and if your local Tractor Supply doesn't have it, just tell them, and, and they'll get you hooked up. It's a yeah, it's also, a great deal. Also, we uh, you can see that we're sporting our uh, our new uh, lids here, yeah. our, our our Setter Tales podcast hats, and so anybody's interested in those, uh, we're going to be able to go to the uh, website, the uh, Facebook page, and hopefully, uh, if you're interested in one of those, uh, let us know, and we'll send you the details on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the more we get the message out there, and uh, the more people find out about us, hopefully, we can get more viewers, and we can get. Uh, uh, more information out to everybody. So that brings us to tonight's uh, show and our guest. And this is somebody that 
you've been uh, connected with mm -hmm. through some some other things that you do. Uh, everybody does know that one of our big things that we both are involved in are veteran hunts, heroes hunts. Uh, we dedicate and volunteer a lot of time. We love doing it. Uh, it's just a simple way that we can give a little bit back to these uh, these guys that have uh, sacrificed so much for us, and uh, we appreciate their service to our to our country. And so, by uh, taking a little uh, a couple days and getting in the field with them hunting, uh, that's the least we can do. And mm -hmm. so uh, let's tell us a little bit about uh, who we're talking to tonight, Thomas. Well, um, I was at a Pheasants Forever state convention, and this guy got a Hall of Fame award. So that's pretty big when you go to the state convention and get a Hall of Fame. And, and you know, we, we were talking back and forth during lunch, and they were doing their, inter, you know, introductions, and, and uh, he didn't really talk to me a whole lot about hunting. He just just uh just talking about weather and and how much he enjoyed what pheasants forever does and and so you know i didn't put two and together two and two together they had big plaques and you know big cardboard things with their face on it and, and uh one of the biologists stood up and and talked about mike and all the great things he does for for veterans he's a veteran himself he came out from the east coast and He's got a nice little property down where he lives and he's put it into habitat, trees, all this stuff. And, and he helps a lot of guys with, um, uh, down at the veterans hospital and gets, helps them with all their with stuff that they would need. And, and then he also provides his, his home and his property for guys just to come out and chill out, get away from the noises of the world, just get out there and, and enjoy nature and, you know, I talked to him the other day, and, and he's got quail, he's got pheasants, he's got a pond, he has ice fishing. Um, he brings these guys out and does a big ice fishing thing, and they cook on the ice. And, and just the most, the kindest giving person I've ever met, we talk, we text back and forth, and everything I get out of him is is positive. And, and he got me hooked up with, with Patrick Perkins. We'll bring him on. And... Uh, and Patrick and I are currently uh, working on setting up. Uh, we're going to do a hunt up in my home area, and we're going to bring some veterans up, and and uh, we're going to do a couple days of pheasant hunting, hanging out, having some steaks, and and just having some good fellowship. So um, Patrick's with the Heroes Hunting Foundation, and and I can't explain it as good as he can. So we'll bring him on and, and thank <clears throat> him for for coming on with us, with us tonight. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, the long and short of it is uh, we went through um, multiple deployments, uh, a couple guys and I, and we had realized that after a big event that we had, had in our last unit where the average age was 20, that these people are going to have to talk to somebody when they get home. Having been down that road, our VA in Des Moines isn't bad. It's just understaffed. It's underfunded. It's And that's the majority of the way they are. So we knew from experience and bad experiences that you're probably going to get outsourced to a civilian where they'll say things like they told me when I originally went, which was like, Oh, we know what it's like. We know what you're going through. I'm like, yeah, you're fired. Um, you know, like here's a, here's a video of me getting blown up by an IED. You tell me about your paper jam yesterday. We'll compare notes and then we'll talk about who knows what. And so, uh, while we were still in theater in 2013, we're looking and looking and looking. We couldn't find anything. So uh, my truck commander at the time and I were like, we'll just do it ourselves. And so we, we just came up with this idea of like hunting and having to be just vets. And, you know, your only requirement is that you're deployed. It doesn't have to be like some sort of doom and gloom event. It was just being deployed because as you've been deployed, what, what happens is they now know that if you're at a long attention span, high level of attention for a long period of time, your synapses in your brain actually start reprogramming. And that's, that's where you run into a lot of problems with vets with like PTSD, memory loss, um, what we call just chasing the dragon of warring because you can't ever get your adrenaline level to that height again. Um, and so it caused a lot of problems. So we, for lack of a better word, I don't like this term, but it's the only way to describe it is we, by doing the hunts, those are great. And it's not a bait and switch, but it gives everybody a, uh, like a safe space so that you're around people that are have at least gone through the majority of what you've done, even if not in your theater, you know, like a Vietnam vet, an Iraqi vet, 
two different total experiences, but they have a general idea of the language, the acronyms, uh, something that civilians may not understand. So we have our own sense of humor. If you've ever you've spent a lot of time around vets, you know that like we're, we're a little bit different. And if you, the stuff that we thought was funny, you know, if you told your mother, she'd probably think you're a sociopath, but you just kind of had to be there and experience it. And uh, so, like I said, like the hunts are great and they love them. And we oddly have like an extremely high level of success, which uh, just kind of goes into my crew. But uh, it's within five, 10 minutes, you know, they're just happy to be there to be able to have that commune and community to where, you know, we've had an Iraqi vet, an Afghani vet, a uh, Korean and a Vietnam vet all in one camp. And within 10 minutes, you would have thought they were from the same unit. They never met each other before. You know, they're making fun of the Navy guy. They're like cracking jokes with each other and busting balls. I mean, it's just, it's great. Yeah. And, um, we, we, when we talked on the phone last week, um, I've helped out with, with the purple heart foundation. I know you guys have worked with yeah. them too. So hanging out with those guys, I, I can, I can understand what you're talking about. I, I, I just sat back and, you know, I kind of have that same kind of humor. So I got it and, and enjoyed it. And, and, and I do notice that camaraderie that they all have. And even if they weren't, maybe one was in the army and one guy was a Marine, one guy's the Navy, but they've all had those same experiences that were similar. And, uh, you know, just sitting back and listening to guys talk, it was, it was pretty amazing how their attitudes change from being just getting off a plane driving up here you know and 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 just getting out and shooting some trap and then doing pheasant hunting and then just sitting out and having a drink and and a steak you know yeah and and, and part of that too uh, with that purple heart tour which uh, they're still good friends of ours i like them they uh they deal with a lot of sf guys and we went up and helped them with a couple hunts filmed it try to help promote them and uh that that, that brings its own uh its own level of difficulty because I mean, they're SF, <laughs> I'm just regular army or was regular army. So like we, we look up at them and we'd hear them talking and a lot of their acronyms and things like we don't understand. So it gave me insight into what it's like for my friends and family who are civilian to, to hear my, my military friends when I talk, because even at that level, we didn't have a clue. And then getting into the actual pheasant hunting, we had to teach them to kind of let the birds run because they don't, they don't waste ammo. That's for sure. And they're good shots. <laughs> yeah. So like, as soon as a bird would flush, it'd be like, boom, you know, we're like, Whoa, you know, like, you're just like pillowcasing everything, you know, you gotta please let it go a little bit, you know, but I mean, they had, and they had fun. And like every, like I said, every time you go out, you get that communal uh, event, you know, and like I said, like it, you don't even have to be at the same theater. You at least know the level of suck that everybody went to. And, and one of the things that's been really interesting to watch for me is that when you have these like multi-generational groups, they all kind of just automatically defer to the older ones, you know, like we, we always explain it, like, you know, in my era, which was my last point was 2012, 2013, you know, we've got drones, armored vehicles, armored vests, like, infrared we we have all these tools you know and then you look at like a vietnam vet who had literally a green jacket a helmet that wasn't even good enough for stopping a bullet and all they did was just to boil water so they could shave you know they had a helicopters are just being introduced the m16 is just being introduced they're in a jungle they're with an extremely smart enemy you just kind of like Ugh. like i mean like and and then they all look back too like then they're like well korea sucks <laughs> It just further and further goes back. Like we've never had an environment where people were just like, oh yeah, well, we were, we were harder, you know, or it just, everybody just kind of gets it. I mean, we might make fun of an MOS or something like that, but other than that, it's just, it's, it's, everybody gets along and I, I we haven't, we're going on 10 years now and we've never had any kind of incidents with each other because in that communal time too, Another thing that inadvertently happens is everybody's tried different things, different therapies, you know, like counselors or, you know, some people didn't know that you don't have to go with the counselor you're given. You know, you can go until you find one you like. And then the different stuff that they went through, you know, they're like, you'll sit in this, these campfires and, and there's, you know, 
fluids are flowing pretty good too. So stories are all coming out. If you've ever been around veterans, we're not afraid to tell stories. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so like, it'll start to come out. Well, like, Hey, this is something that were really worked for me. Have you ever thought about this? You know, or, or an explanation of something you never knew before. And that's, that's where it all starts meshing together of like the hunt, the companionship, you know, and then the hunt itself is like, you know, you have a common goal, you have a, a common enemy. And so everybody's kind of like mission briefed and they'll, they'll still fall into like old military training. You know, I've, I've been on pheasant hunts where we're walking out to get online and everybody just it automatically falls into like a five meter spacing, which is what you do when you're on patrol to the point of where even like, the last man on the line, I've seen, they'll turn around and he, he spun around and kind of looked at me and then he went back forward. And I was like, you were just checking like rear security, weren't you? And he was like, yeah, sorry. It's a habit. I'm like, I totally get it, man. Like it's to this day. I still, I was, like I said, we were route clients. I purposely watch every single spot. I put my foot, you know, like even to this day back in America. Yeah. I, I guess. And now you say that I do, I did notice the, the with the veterans and, and anybody who had military experience I've hunted with, you, you know, especially when we're guiding, you don't have to yell at that guy at the end to slow down, let everybody catch up. Everybody stays even. And, and if you got a guy that, you know, um, can't get along as fast as the next guy, they wait for him. And I, I just think that's, that's, uh, yeah, you know, that's just burned into you guys. And I, th I, I find that highly respectful. And I just like, that is, I, I think it's awesome. So, you know, what has your progress been for your organization? I know you just said it was you're 10 years deep, you know, from start to now, what, you know, what has changed, you know, what's your biggest progression? Um, actually the entire thing has been an evolution. Uh, like I said, we started while we're deployed and our actual, our original idea was we were all watching hunting videos and DVDs overseas and, we we're we kind of been like brainstorming about like what can we do like in the show world you know to become famous and you know whatever that would be completely different than anybody else and you know everything's being done and and when you're trying to get like sponsors or whatnot it's it's kind of comical because a lot of people are approaching these companies every day there's like a thousand emails they get you know and they're like oh, we got an idea for a show okay what is it well we're going to hunt things. No kidding. And we're going to film it. Like what? So we thought about it and what, you know, cause we're doing 20 hour days in a truck. So you have nothing but to talk. And uh, we we're like, well, what we'll do is we'll do a hunting show. It'll only be veterans. And then on top of that, since everywhere in the world where everything's like live action video and helmet cans and whatnot, I'm like, we'll take their footage from whatever event they want to talk about and we'll mix it into the show and then you'll have them both. So you have like a hunting show and then in the middle, kind of like they'll sit down and talk about something they went through humorous, bad, you know, like there's, I always tell everybody like I've been shot up, blown up and set on fire and I got the video to prove it. And so we started that process and uh, we're like, yep, that's it. That's great. We are geniuses. Look at us go. And so we started dealing with my dogs are being a handful where, uh, started going through that process. And like, uh, the very first, very first two soldiers we brought out, we are so we're based out of Iowa. Uh, we had two coming from what's called the HUA program at Fort Campbell, where it's healing outside of a hospital is what that stands for. And it was a Sergeant and then a private Sergeant's a big Turkey hunter private never really hunted before at all. And so we're like, we're paying for things out of our pocket. Like you get here, we'll cover your gas. We're going to go to Nebraska and go turkey hunting, get some Merriam's, uh, just get here. We cover everything else. That's all you gotta do is get here. And then even once you get here, we're going to reimburse you for your gas. Cause we don't want any stress whatsoever. And they, he did, he got that showed up. We're driving out to Nebraska, which was still the Northeast side. So we still got time to sit and talk. And it wasn't 10 minutes in that, that drive. And the veteran was just like, this is amazing. Like, I, I don't even care if we're successful. It's just great to be able to talk. And then him and I had actually been in the same theater just at different times. So 
we're as we're relating stories you know i'm like oh yeah i remember that rock thrower he's like four houses down on the left we used to paintball that kid you know whatever uh allegedly paintball if anybody's watching this anyway so <laughs> we uh it is being recorded i, I felt like i made that very clear <laughs> yeah, yeah. So i gotta remember how i words and stuff uh, so anyway uh, once we got to that uh we realized this this is not what we want to do i'm like it's more of a therapeutical thing than anything and we fought through some issues we even kind of went through a semi-tornado that year and uh, it was a blast we got turkeys everything was great and, and coming home from that immediately we're like this is a non-for-profit type of thing this is stupid because there's there's so much other stuff going on out there that is is basically people profiting off of paper patriotism and you'll see it, you know, it's just, it's just very soapboxy. And so we're like, we're not going to do that at all. Like if anybody's going to help our brothers and sisters, it's going to be us. So from that point forward, we, we completely 180 and we're like, nope, let's, we're going nonprofit. This is what we're doing. In fact, that first soldier became now our secretary in our board. And, uh, so once we hit that level now it's like, all right, let's do proof of concept. So we're still like, let's still do the show. But we need the people to see what we're doing and what what it correlates to and how like hunting and veterans kind of like coalesce together and why that would work. Uh, so from that point, so that's where we did. Uh, we have we have like a TV show. It's it's edited by me. And it's pretty horrible. At least the first season was. But it's on Carbon Carbon TV. You can see it. Uh, uh, and all it is is just basically a proof of concept to show like yeah. how it works and what we're doing. We kind of went that, through the same the thing. Yeah. We kind of went through the same thing a few years back. We uh, we got this brilliant idea that, well, geez, there's not very many upland hunting shows, you know, and that was our thing. We had English setters that in in Iowa weren't, you know, there just weren't that many of them around. And so we thought, geez, this is, uh, and I I guided a hunt with a guy that was doing a deer show, and, and he actually brought a couple of his camera guys who had never filmed a, a bird show before and didn't know how to do it and and they never had filmed a dog doing what a dog does in the field and so it was kind of interesting um i had to kind of tell them what was about to happen with the dog on point and you know where to be to maybe get the best shot but after that experience i thought and i was talking to my son you know maybe we could do a show i mean we actually talked to this guy and said what what would be the steps and as you mentioned well you got to have uh you know you got to have a uh, you know a teaser you got to have a, a film of of your show you just can't go somewhere and say hey i'm gonna make a show would you sponsor me and, i think the way it was pitched to me was <laughs> quote how hard could it be how hard could it be <laughs> well yeah. you know the thing was i knew i knew the hunting thing uh yeah. you know, i knew the hunting side of it i had no clue what it took to film it or to edit it or any of that jazz and so uh so that's where will came in and but we found out that there was a little more to it than uh yeah. just going and knocking on a sponsor's door and saying hey we're doing this cool hunting show what do you think right. well and, and so, then and that's and plus the the industry itself is is in television wise anyway what people don't understand is like if you have a show they're like wow you know you must be making it no, you just paid for the time. The the, <laughs> yeah. the hunting industry TV is completely backwards. And maybe I'm giving away yeah. secrets I shouldn't do, but it was real shocking to us because it was like, if you're willing to pay like $1,300, we will put on 13 episodes for you. And you're like, that's great. And then, you know, but then you're responsible for trying to sell this advertising, advertising yeah. time that then will like compensate and hopefully be more than what you paid for the time. So then you kind of make a profit to help your organization and after going through it and a, getting a bad taste with a couple of different personalities we met and then the, the industry itself, because, you know, each episode is like, a, that's 30 minutes or well, that's three, that's a month it takes to edit that and a good one together. And then that's if I saw all the footage, if I hadn't, then I got to watch my pro staff bring in footage that, and that's hours and hours of B-roll. Yeah. You got to try and put the story together in your head. But but because the, because if you don't watch every second of that footage, that yeah, one yeah, that one little five yeah. second thing may be the maybe the shot. I mean that may be the show, yeah. 
and it's in that mess of stuff. And so, yeah, I've spent a lot Especially of time when, watching. Especially when you're doing like waterfowl or like pheasant hunting. Oh, absolutely. Those purple heart ones, those are the first time we've ever done that too. Yeah. And we actually got pulled off some stunts that I haven't seen on other shows where we actually had a drone in the air and caught on film and tracked several pheasants flying and being shot out of the air. You know, I, and it was nerve wracking because I'm like, please don't hit our drone. This is the only thing. <laughs> well, we, but, we did the drone thing. That, yeah, we did back the drone on that, thing. Yeah. Back on the television thing, though, like it's, you know, the more we looked at it, the more we're like, that's great. It, you know, it puts us out there, especially once we got transferred over to Carbon TV, which is free for, for us to put on there. And it's stationary. We can send people to it all the time. Here, this is what we do. We were like, we're not spending any more money on it because that's money we could be using to send out on hunts i mean a hunt right. roughly is about a thousand dollars it depends on how many people take and what it is but so and and this is still at the time we're still doing this all out of our own pocket we're just starting to get into trade shows um well that was and, my question i was going to ask about sponsors then if you had sponsors <laughs> obviously anybody watching this if you're interested in being a sponsor you need to get a hold of these uh these guys but uh yeah it's uh it's it, it'd be nice to say that we all had all the sponsors we could we could stand, but you know it's. Uh... Uh, we have we have uh, well, what we do now is uh, we do most of the major trade shows in the Midwest. It's, it's it's very convenient that we're we're stationed in Iowa because we'll do the Iowa Deer Classic, um, the Illinois Deer Classic now because it's owned by the Iowa people. We do the Nebraska show. Uh, which is phenomenal. That's owned by a veteran and it's in January. And then, um, well, we do Indiana in, as well. We used to do Ohio, Wisconsin. The shows have kind of, I don't know, petered out a little bit, but Henry repeating arms gives us this military tribute in a case every year, which we raffle that off. That brings in a lot of money. Uh, we work with grunt style, so that we can, they, they're a good partner with us. So we, we sell, most people think we are the grunt style booth at the trade shows because it's, we have a huge booth. Um, and you can usually find us because we usually have a horde of veterans around us and we may or may not supply our booth with beverages, but uh, that's just in here and over there. But I, do they describe that as classified information? That's just yeah, a bad maybe. rumor. That's a bad it's, rumor. Uh, booth expenses. Uh, yeah. But, you know, with that, with that one sponsor, it's great. And they want to remain nameless because they, they, uh, one, they're afraid that they're, since they're such a big name that they'll get attacked by PETA. They're like, if you use our product and you put a Dan animal next to it, PETA will be all over us in a heartbeat. And, uh, I'm like, okay. And I'm like, how do we, we do anything? And he, he was actually the one that presented it to me when he got a hold of us, which was, he's like, we shouldn't be soapboxing. He's like, all these companies you see out there going like, oh, look what we do for vets and this and that. And da, da, da. He's like, they should be doing it anyway because we owe a debt of gratitude for them. He's like, and he was the one that brought up the term profiting off of patriotism. He's like, if you see companies doing that, that's what they're doing. Now, as far as like everything else, unfortunately, it's harder for organizations like ourselves to, to do what we're doing because there isn't a war on TV every day, which is sad because it's not sad that there isn't a war, but it's sad that that's what brings people's attention. If that's not happening, then people just forget. They're like, well, you know, I'll, I'll buy a yellow ribbon. I'll attach it to my car. And then I'm supporting the troops, you know, and, and we've even kind of backed off too. We have different organs or groups, companies that we've worked with in for the last 10 years. And they've been great. They helped us get off the ground and they have, they have done everything they said they were going to do and nobody has ever faulted them in anything, but we're kind of to a point now where, you know, discounts on products and us, you know, selling it at your cost and then keeping the difference is just really us selling your stuff. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's great for you. It's great for us, but it's just, it's, this isn't my job. You know, we don't take checks from this. We have like real jobs. So that takes time for me. You know, when, when I go on trade shows, those are vacation days I'm burning. Mm -hmm. When I go and hunt, same thing, you know, which makes my wife super happy that my vacation time is so small with the actual family because we're doing it for all these things. But it's it's, it's a it's a it's something that I love to do um, now. But we're we're to the point now where we're like, hey, if you really want to help us, you know what's going to help me get these veterans out in the field? Money. That's what it is. Like, 
that there's just no way around it. And that's mm -hmm. the flip side is too, that having been around so long, we've seen groups come and go some with all the best intentions, some not so much. In fact, it'll, it's nameless, but the group that, you know, our chapter that we have in another state right now came from another group that was doing some very questionable things. So that was why it was easy to just convert them to one of our chapters. So, so if like, for instance, if you're going to do a pheasant hunt with some, with some of your guys, how does, what are the parts and pieces of that? How do you put that together? Well, uh, one thing we already kind of like put out a feeler, uh, who would be, you know, just, we have a Facebook page, uh, of course, like everybody does just heroes hunting and we've, I think we have 22,000 followers. I mean, we're not like gigantic, but we're not just starting up either. It's been a long battle. And so we just put out feelers for the most part. We used to have an application process, um, which was great at the beginning, but then it came in so fast and so many that it was just impossible to keep everything straight. Cause like I said, this isn't our full-time job. This is a full-time job, but we have real jobs that we got to keep plus life. My wife wants to see me every once in a while. Um, so we just set it up to where we'll just put things out on our page and be like, Hey, this is a hunt that we're trying to do. Um, generally we're trying to do them a year in advance, unless it's something like this, uh, pheasant hunt that we're trying to set up. Then we're just like, who's interested. We'll get a list and they're like, just stay tuned. And then what we'll probably end up doing is once the dates are confirmed and we know the number that we're, people we're roughly going to be working with, we're like, whoever wants to do it can make these dates and you know can be there put your name in here and then we'll we'll probably randomly draw the names that we can and go from there because there's there's no shortage of vets that's for sure like I was we, say, is there a number that you try to cap it at i mean is there kind of that number that you say it's really just hunt? whatever's comfortable um and it okay. depends on the species that you're hunting because you know like we we have worked with the wounded warrior before and they're great they you know they got a hold of us and they're just like Hey, we have two veterans that want to go deer hunting. We don't know anything about deer hunting. If we pay for it, can you take them? And we're like, sure. That's that's the perfect scenario, actually. So, and we did that. You know, another time they came back to us and they're like, we have 30 soldiers we want to take deer hunting. Can you do it? I'm like, well, let me figure out all these different landowners and outfitters we work with and how we could stretch it out over a season. We probably could do it. It'd be hard, but we could do it. And they're like, no, we want to do it like on one weekend. I'm like, there's no way. Like they didn't understand how that would slaughter a herd, you know, because we're still at heart conservationists and, and you can't, you can't legitimately do that. So then you, you're basically kind of dealing with like the lodging is going to be one thing, travel is another, uh, what, what is whoever's hosting it? Like, you know, yourself like Thomas, or is there, how, what do you feel comfortable with? Like. You know, because at the same time, we're also watching other aspects of it. Like nobody wants to be another Chris Kyle. You know, like we're, we understand we want to help our brothers and sisters. But at the same time, we're extremely cautious as to what we're doing and how we do it. And so, uh, I mean, we don't babysit, but we, we definitely are consciously aware as we're going through an event of what's happening and how it's happening. And like I said, we've never had anything even remotely close to some sort of incident, but you always have an eye for it. And then, I don't know, we kind of always just pick a magic number. It just kind of comes to us. And we're like, how about this? And we're like, yeah, I think that would work. Um, you usually want it to be an odd, no, no, an even number of people, though. I don't know if, like, like the way my, I've noticed this in my kids, but it works with veterans, too. You want it to be even, because if you do an odd number, inevitably, for some reason, everybody will turn on one person. And, like, they become the butt of all the jokes, and sometimes it can go the wrong way, so... If you, kind for some like, reason, if you keep them even, like it doesn't happen that way. Kind of like a buddy system type deal. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like when we put them in the rooms, uh, well, one, we're trying to save money for one, but yeah. like we'll still put like two people to a room, uh, stuff like that, so that then you're never alone either. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, I'm not going to invite you in to come do something and be like, all right, here's your room. See you later. You know, a lot of people stay at my house as they're going through that I've never met before. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this is my house. It's open to you. You're, you know, you're my brother or sister, or whatever, like, please come on in, like help yourself, like truly make yourself at home. Um, and then and go from there. So you mentioned something about filming in a tornado. Was it, <laughs> was that a, was that a, like a metaphor or was there actually a tornado? <laughs> no, there, there literally was a, uh, 
So we're in uh, Royal, Nebraska, Northeast, Northeast Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, another buddy I was deployed with on my first tour. It's his family's land. And then right next to it is a campground. So our genius idea for the spring was like, well, let's just camp there because it's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, his actual house is probably 45 minutes away from the hunting land and so are hotels. So we're like, well, let's just camp there because I'm not a, uh, as much of a morning person as everybody or evening. So that 45 minute drive from his house to camp, that's 45 minutes. I'm not sleeping. So I like to like push it right to the event of like, okay, just get up and go. And so we did that. We, we brought a pull behind camper. We had some pop-ups and everything was great up until the last day. Uh, it just, the weather went completely Midwest, you know, just wait five minutes, you know, and it was, it went from a balmy 70 degrees. I remember I was hunting turkeys in my shorts in a blind and then that evening it dropped and it went to snow and then it just started picking up and picking up and then there ended up being a tornado that went through the area not far from us blew all the pop the pop-up tents all over the place i mean it, it pretty much destroyed our camp but it's uh it's just one of those things it, it's kind of like uh uh steve Rinella talks about like nobody remembers like easy scares or joy like it you know, you're not going to be like, hey, remember that roller coaster we went on that one time? You know, that's not that big a deal. But like the more it kind of sucks, the more you're going to remember it. And then you can kind of laugh about it later, which is the similarities with deployment and why people, as soon as they get home, want to go straight back. It's because it's because of that camaraderie with your brothers. And that it's just something about the suck that that uh, makes it worthwhile. You know, it's life experiences, right? Right. I mean, it, 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 coming from the military and going into the civilian world definitely gives you drastically different perspectives. And uh, especially, if, like I said, like we were route clearance, so we look for bombs on purpose. And, you know, there's spearheads and all those that, you know, like, yeah, there's all these SF guys, but we go in front of them because we're cheap soldiers. They're expensive soldiers. Like that Ian Donovan, that guy is extremely expensive. Us, dime a dozen. And so... <laughs> you know, like you'll, so you live that life and, uh, you know, come back. The story I always tell us about a secretary at work is she's got to give her presentation. Oh my gosh, it's so stressful, so stressful. And so as she's going through her thing, and I'm just flipping through my phone real quick. And then finally she got done. And I was like, oh, check this picture out. It's the one you had at, actually leading up to the, the podcast. It was like, here's a, here's me digging up a live 30 pound IED. Like, tell me how stressful your day is. Like, yeah, like it's covered there, but if you look at the bottom, there's a, a big rice cooker IED, and uh, they they don't have any problem with trying to get you, or you know, just you know, hear somebody like, "This is the worst day of my life." I'm like, have you ever been shot at? Like, your day's not that bad. Like, it's it's okay. And so you just have this, like I said, that warped sense of humor where you just there's there's so much things that could go worse or be more stressful that. There's no reason to sweat the small stuff. I do. It's a long story. I'm not going to bring it up, but I have been shot at. And it wasn't, it was an intentional. intentional I, I had a, uh, a kid. That guy's in prison now. He's in prison now. <laughs> but, I hope uh, so. so. I had a kid, a kid, kid do it once. He was out pheasant hunting. I was walking out to my truck to go deer hunting uh, down by Winterset. And I, I, I saw the pheasant flush. I was like, oh. And then boom, and you could hear the pellets go. And I turn, and then it, the bird had turned toward me. So it sh the kid shot over me again. No orange, no nothing, just the neighbor kid out on, not supposed to be on this property. So, so as soon as it sweeps past, and I'm just standing there just looking right at him, just like, how did you not see the gigantic white truck that I just got out of? <laughs> and he froze, and I'm just, you know, come here. So he walks over there. And I'm like, first of all, you're lucky you're not the first person to have ever shot at me. <laughs> and two, like, do we really need to get your dad involved in this? Like, you know, you're not supposed to be here. And he just, like, got it. There was no need to – I mean, it was dangerous and stupid, but, I mean, they're kids. So so when, when you're doing these hunts, which one is your favorite? Like, uh, pheasant, species? turkey, deer? Or... 
I would love to tell you it's pheasant, but every time I hunt pheasant, I never see them. I see them when I'm going out on the stand or I take somebody else pheasant hunting, you know, like the purple art tours, stuff like that. Like I, I, I like the idea and I love the bird. It's delicious, but I just can't, for some reason, my luck is just horrible with pheasant hunting. Uh, turkey's great. Um, and our other people are, are waterfowlers. That's great too. I think it's too much work for a little bird. Amen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> too early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that too. It's way earlier. Yeah. That's the sleeping thing. Cause it's way earlier. Because you can say, you gotta I get a water if you uh, I used to sleep in the boat at midnight to get my spot. And I, I've, I've yet to hunt a duck in like eight years just yeah. because I got, it, it's too much work. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing, and Wade probably knows this. There's many benefits to being the cameraman on those hunts. Cause like while everybody else is like getting their blinds brushed and all this and getting everything, the decoys out and everything, I'm like, oh, I better, better get some B roll of this. You know, I'm like, oh, I better film this. You know? Or like yeah. getting in and out of the boat, you know, I'm like, ah, I don't have any boots and they'll carry you over there and do stuff because you're the camera guy, you know. But yeah, uh, my favorite it's, it's tough. It's tough being the talent, you know, where you just have to. <laughs> That's right. I was going to say, that yeah. does not align with my experience as a camera guy, but uh, to each their own. I can, I can help you out and give you some tips. Are there batteries yeah. in that camera? Uh, yeah, I'm the Left talent. Lens cap on. Yeah, yeah, that's what my oh, son yeah. always says. Or, I'm the or talent. Like just tell uh, me where to stand. When they're oh, uh, uh, no, it's, uh, snow it's geese interesting. Hunting. When they so, when snow geese hunting, too, because your blind is usually off away from everybody else, so you don't mm -hmm. have to be near that collar, like here in it. Yeah. And uh, my, my vice president, Duds, will tell you, like, I get stupid when I'm by myself. But I'll start having conversations from my snacks that are, like, trapped under me inside of my blind. Like, But my favorite is either deer with a bow or uh, the pronghorn we do in Colorado because it's long-range shooting, and I, and I love long-range shooting. I think our first, first text uh, back and forth, you were actually <sighs> sitting in a tree, and I think you did yeah. get a doe. Yeah, I was, that. actually, yeah. Oh, I, I yeah. took a doe that night, too. You were good luck. So uh, see, yeah, yeah. told you, Wade. So when <laughs> you, you when you when you were out there and you uh, were unsuccessful on the pheasants, I mean, were you hunting with dogs or were you just trying to walk them up or what were you trying? To uh, we had it. Well, that time that I'm referring to, it was just me and my buddy. He had a dog. Uh, oh man, I almost screwed up. I almost said where we were, but uh, it, it wasn't like a it wasn't a solid effort. I would say okay. like that. I mean, we we were doing it because uh, I because I used to hunt out there too, and it's a public area. And I I've watched pheasants walk past my stand. And I was like, man, if we were like, I could limit well, out. They always they always do when you're in oh, a stand. Man. They always do when you're in a deer stand. They'll walk so right they by. They love it. the flush in the dark oh, yeah. too. Like when you're walking oh, to or from your stand. Yeah, yeah that'll get your that. attention. That'll yeah. get your attention. Yeah. So you know, uh, now it's going to be fun. I think. Um, you know, I think the pheasant hunting thing is uh, is uh, lots of fun for especially for guys that haven't experienced it. We had some right. uh, law enforcement guys from Ohio and Indiana, I think, and the bird numbers there diminished many years ago, so they really had not experienced pheasant hunting, and and uh, they were uh, uh, pretty excited. That you, know, you try to explain to them what's gonna what it's gonna be like when that rooster, even though the dog says it's there, you know it's there doesn't matter when that when that when that rooster when you take that step and that rooster comes out it's an experience that you just can't yeah. you can't explain yeah. to somebody until they till they till they do it you know and so uh, yeah it was fun to see them come in after the hunt and i and, think uh, i think pheasant and turkey are probably the best two to get your kids interested in hunting as well because there's a right. there's a definite interaction you know yep. pheasants you're walking you're out getting out you're out you're outside which is better than like I love being outside, mm -hmm. you know, you know, with turkeys, a call respond, you may not see them, but you know, you know, they're there and they have a distinct sound. You're, it's something your kids get excited about. And I think pheasant hunting is one of those two is like, cause uh, you know, along with what we're doing, we don't just deal with people who are hunters. You know, we we've had many veterans who bring, they've never even hunted before in life. We had with Turkey, whatever. And the ones we've taken out the best are the pheasant ones because it's, it's, Point and shoot and hope, you know, like yeah. well, I'm not that good of a, a shot. <clears throat> Trust me, there's a line of them, people here yeah. and we, we right. will, we'll do our best to get it. Like, you know, so just go have fun and not even think about it. Yeah. And, and with all the, the kids I've taken out, it's, 
you know, they don't always get the first bird that flushes just because they're like, whoa, and, you know, the dog's on point, and it's just like this, they're getting their exercise, they got their adrenaline up, and then they think, oh, man, I'm wore out and tired, but, you know, you get in those lulls where you you work around, and then, boom, up comes another rooster off a point, and then it's it's like real quiet, and then all of a sudden, boom, big giant adrenaline rush, and, and then you can just, you know, and it, and that for me, even if I'm not carrying a gun, I do it a lot. You know, I might shoot a bird here and then just walk for another four hours, which most people think I'm nuts. But uh, just that that it, initial, a, it, that adrenaline rush just keeps you going and going. And you're like, holy crap, it's four o'clock already. I started at eight, you know, and, and uh, you know, and that's something, you know, the reason I, I reached out to you guys on this is it's just something I enjoy and I enjoy sharing my dogs with people and and my grandpa was in the military in, in world war ii and and he didn't hear much stories from him he didn't talk about it but um you know it's he instilled that with me too you know and, and you'd mentioned beforehand that you know profiting off of patriotism and and that's you know definitely not something i aim for i just that's i have that much respect for everything that you guys do and and have have sacrificed for our country and and uh you know that's just something that that uh i guess i just uh it's, it's kind of what I, I i like to do and and uh when well, we're doing it's, our it's podcast, amazing and I'll, i'm not trying to cut you off but it's nope, amazing because because uh we are greatly appreciative of it because it's few and far between i mean there there are people out there who want to help but that's why when like when we do trade shows People like here, take my information. I always go, no, take my card. And it's it's because the first couple of years we had learned, like you'll have people come all the time. Like, I want to help. I want to do something. I want to do something. I want to do something. They're like, sweet. And you take down all their information. Well, then, and you tell them like, hey, you know, it's not going to be this weekend, but a couple of weeks or whatever, I'll get a hold of you once it's all calms down, and we'll start talking about things we could do. And either either they forgot or they changed their mind or. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, whatever. It's like we've heard no a thousand different ways. That's fine. So when you when you find the people, especially now, like after 10 years, all of the groups and landowners that we're working with, we've worked with for 10 years. I mean, we've we've met them, we've worked with them, we're just like, this is great. Like, and they've they've all become this giant family, you know. We're kind of hoping we can fold you into the guys into that too, because if uh if we have the mutual friend of of Mike Z, like you've got to be awesome because that guy is incredible. Like then and hopefully he hears this because, you know, we all tell him all the time, like, man, you're amazing. But the stuff he does with us, he is basically our VA rep for helping uh, veterans get the, the services that they need. And he, he mm-hmm. is passionate about it. And that's his thing. Now, he has his own story and everything that went through it. And I'm not going to air it out. Mm-hmm. But he, he's just an amazing person. The fact that he can do it. And, and you know, for my first unit, a lot of people really kind of got worked over and had given up. And once they found out we had a person that actually legitimately knows all the ins and outs, here's what you need to do, how you need to do it. And uh, you can start getting the help that you need. You know, we really started, I felt bad because I was bombarding him and he's like, no, man, you, there's no way you could ever give me too many. Just keep them coming. So, yeah. I mean, and, and I told you, you know, you know, just, I stayed on him and stayed on him and stayed on him and, and, and uh, he remembered a story I told him over a year ago. You know, I hadn't talked to him for like six months and he remembered and all the people he talks to, and I'm sure he hears a lot of different stories and he works with some people, but he instantly remembered what I had told him the story about, um, you know, my experience with my grandfather. And it was just it's like, this guy has the biggest heart he's caring and you know, I'd love to get him out on a hunt. I don't think he wants to, but I'd love to get him out on a pheasant hunt and 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 do that or, or just go down and, you know, he says he's got his ice fishing tournament. And I thought, I don't ice fish much, but I think I want to go. But when we when we're, we get towards the end of our podcast, we, you know, we always go, what is your favorite dog story or something? But, you know, with you not being that big into it, you know, the, the hunting with dogs, you know, what's his, you know, with your organization, what is your, like, favorite success story when somebody asks you what's the first thing that you you know favorite thing you like to talk about from when you guys have started till now well i, I could actually go on two sides of that like you're right like I, I mean i have i have dogs we have a bunch of rescue dogs in fact we just rescued another one which is 
I may regret. But uh, what I was gonna, one of the points I was gonna bring out as far as that goes is uh, when I was watching the Ian Donovan broadcast, and this being an Iowa podcast, I don't think a lot of people know that the Des Moines ARL or the Animal Rescue League has a program for their dogs and for veterans where they will take a select group of, of dogs and I think they send them to Clorinda or it's a prison here in Iowa. And they basically have the prisoners train these dogs up. They're not service dogs. They don't get that full service, but they do get uh, what they turn them into comfort dogs, mm -hmm. which I inadvertently, my, my boxer that just recently passed away was my comfort dog when I came home from a first appointment. So and they're va invaluable. And, uh, I wanted to point out to people that, you know, you can go to the ARL, they have a, a like a special area for it and, and, and go in there and look at these different dogs and they will match them with your house and check that out, make sure it's all right. So it's there, you know, so you, so as far as people like being worried about the expense of service dogs and, or the inavailability, I wanted people to know that they do have them there at the ARL that you can do. Um, our biggest success it's hard to beat the first one, obviously, because like, that kind of set it all and it, it changed it. Um, I mean, there there have been like hunts that have been better than others, none that have been bad. Uh, you, you know, you have you have funny moments like of people who didn't know what we were how to do it that we didn't explain right, like a a turkey hunt where we I was with this marine who had been shot five times and lived, but. You know, he'd never been turkey hunting before. So we, of course, we stayed up too late drinking, telling stories. We got up really early, you know, get out to the blind where like the side lights, it's just coming up. They're, they're gobbling. And, you know, I just turned to that guy and I'm just like, they're right there. And he not knowing any better, just looks right back at me. He's like, I know I can hear them. And just, <laughs> poof, they're gone, you know, like, and, and we laughed and, and still had a good time fishing, uh, the, the turkey hunts we do in Illinois has become real close to my heart uh, because of the people and uh, that we work with there that are landowners. Uh, and we've had some amazing hunts there. Same with the Colorado. There, I, I, it's really hard to put one on there, I guess. I mean, there's, there's ones where uh, like in Colorado, we changed the way the locals hunt. I thought that was interesting just because we fell into a couple of different, different advantageous ways of doing it and uh and it's pretty wild west where we go in northeast colorado so we started talking about decoys and how you could do this because you're working pronghorn in the rut and uh we had we had a pronghorn mistake our original giant camera for a pronghorn because we had purposely waited till the sun came down behind us so that they couldn't see us directly to kind of make this sneak on them and he just came running out as soon as that happened we call it the stratton uh, cause that's who was with me at the time. And, uh, now the, the whole family has antelope fans from Turkey fan and, uh, hunts that way. And, uh, it's, it's been awesome. Like it, I mean, I'm kind of like what you were, I think you were alluding to earlier. It's, it's not so much, it's like my personal hunting time is at a premium just because we put so much time in, into the foundation, but it's not like I look at it. And I'm like, Oh man, I wish I was hunting that Colorado hunt, that's a 10 and a half hour drive that I drive without a weapon, pick the people up for either from the airport or meet there, do the hunt. We've been successful nine years in a row. Uh, next year will be our 10th year. I don't doubt we'll do it then, but the, 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 the joy that they get, you know, to, it's like getting your kids being successful. You, you feel like, you know, last year I didn't kill any deer, but I put five people in front of them and they did. So I'm like, I feel like I killed five deer. And uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah same you know, way we're guiding, guiding pheasant hunters. If they're, if they get their first rooster or get any roosters, but they do it for our dog work. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, that, that, that's how I get my enjoyment. And I don't really have to sh shoot anymore or carry a gun for, you know, I do. Right. I'd still like that, but I, I get just as much enjoyment mm -hmm. out of seeing somebody like you get a bird over my dog. Yep. Right. And, and then, and then that, that was also, way. that's also why we, we stopped filming actually is because people knew about the show and they knew what was going on. And when then we quickly identified, it was putting too much pressure on the veteran. Cause they're like, you know, when do we do this interview and this and that? And I was just like, Hey man, just, just, we're just hunting and then we'll figure it all out. Don't worry about it. Just act like I'm not here. And then plus the camera makes people 
just different people, you know, well, you could have a conversation like this. As soon as you turn the camera on that person, they're like, and there we were hunting, you know, it <laughs> changes. Yeah. I may or may not have trained an individual like that to be more <laughs> right. camera. Presentable. I kind of felt like that uh, too. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I got and, the and gift to gab, yeah, but <laughs> this year, got a, we got was... a big monitor in front of us, Patrick, and we're staring at ourselves. Now he's changed it. So it's not all of us, but you're, right. I, I get that. You're like the deer in the headlights. So Oh, yeah, you're just like, I don't know. People what over to the do. world are going to see me. Can I, can what I, do I do with my hands? And the camera's they, on Thomas. Can I pick my nose right yeah. now? <laughs> on camera? Luckily, this year in Colorado, I took a, uh, a, he's still an active duty ranger out of uh, Fort Carson. And he went, I didn't know until afterwards that it was his first rifle hunt ever. But we, he came down the day before, we do all the tag transfers, meets the family, gets pulled into the family immediately. And uh, so we went out the next morning. He'd actually brought his father-in-law with him, which we usually don't have guests, but it was it's just kind of a situation where it worked. So we're out on this edge of this Milo field. The sun's coming up. It was it was cool, but not cold. Yeah, it was crystal clear. And uh, I looked up, and I was at least smart enough to like. I just started taking pictures of the guy, and uh, they're on our Facebook page. And he just had this Kool-Aid smile on his face you know just like completely in the moment completely enjoying it we weren't even talking he was just like looking around and just like you could tell he was like this is awesome mm -hmm. and like those moments are, are the best ones like you know like i said somehow we have like a high success rate and even that morning like we within an hour of that picture we had this dead pronghorn out there and so i think it's uh it's the having zero expectations and I was going to say something profound there, but I just lost track of where I was going. <laughs> well, I can kind of see is you, you get people that aren't used to what, you know, the hunting or whatever that, you know, Wade and I do too. Get them away from the city lights or get them away from their work and just yeah. introduce them to something new. And, you know, you're out in the wild. And, and I think I kind of get what you're talking there. You just, it just opens their eyes to new horizons and, and you can see the excitement, you know, and, and that's what gets my blood pumping is, you know, when you, you introduce somebody to something new like this and, and, uh, and you're helping them out too, you know, Yeah. we, we probably, I mean, most of us probably don't realize yeah, how much think, you help them out yeah. sometimes. And, well, and Thomas and I have talked about this a lot. We're always looking at that, especially youngsters. We're looking at that next generation. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I'm, you know, I'm getting up there and I don't, I honestly will admit that, but. Uh, so what who's going to carry on when i'm gone and i can't do this anymore who's going to be a, training upland dogs who's going to be hunting pheasants if we don't get this this the youth in there that generation hooked on the sport by yeah. giving them that experience then it'll die with us you know so i mean yeah. and so every time we get a, a youngster a young person that experiences it and gets that rooster in the field over one of our dogs we're hoping that we've set a, a lifelong you know, event in, in progress there that they will continue to maybe do it for the rest of their life because they enjoyed it so much. And we've, we've kind of set that hook. And so right. we kind of look at it that way. That yep. it's our, it's our mission to try to bring in the new hunters. Yep. If we and that's, that, and that's one of the aspects too, is like, you hear people talking about all the time. They're like, well, gosh, I wish I could get my kids involved in the outdoors. I'm like, well, how often do you take them? You know, like, like wow, well, you know, yeah. every once in a while. Ask. Yeah. yeah. When they, when they ask, yeah. And you're like, no, man, you got to I'm not saying you got to force them to go out there, but, you, and then you also got to kind of know the parameters. Like you take them out deer hunting, which is super boring for a kid, you know, and you can kind of give them an iPad or do whatever. But the minute they, they tell you like, I'm cold or I'm bored, it doesn't matter how much effort you took in it. You're like, all right, we're done. You know, just cause you I don't want, them. I don't want it. Yeah. I don't want it to be an arduous task where you're like just suffering mm -hmm. through it. And you're like, cause dad wants to do it. Yep. Um, you know, last weekend, actually, one of our pro staff, the, our secretary, the one I was telling about earlier, our very first man, uh, he is now a sergeant major at Fort Riley. He just took out two soldiers and their kids pheasant hunting pre-deployment. They, I mean, they've been deployed before, but like, you, like he had said, you know, a lot of times when you say goodbye, that could be the last time you see that person ever. You know, you don't know what's going on. And, it, and it's not necessarily even if they're going to a, a bad place, it's just things happen. And so that's what it was. It was the, the two, two soldiers. And I think there were three young boys that were there as well. And they had a blast and they just crushed them too. Like they, 
they did, they had a good old time. So I'm still trying to. That's see my plan here in a few weeks. But you know, we you know we want you to to share us with you know every where they can find all the information on on your foundation, and and we 100 percent thank you for joining us. And Absolutely. this is awesome, and and it's it's good to hear that your your organization has has the success level it has, and and uh, you know I'm. I think we'll be posting uh, probably the website with. Uh, yep, we'll be posting all our stuff, we're but doing, we're going to give you, let it. you have your plug too, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we're easy to find. It's just heroeshunting.com. Uh, just remember there, it's O E S and heroes. A lot of people drop the E. Uh, and we're not, we're not hunting with heroes. That's another group. Um, but we, we work with all of them. So if you try to get to us, you end up inadvertently going to another one even better just as long as you're going to the right spot uh our facebook is just facebook backslash heroes hunting i think 100 and then we also have an indiana chapter a nebraska chapter that we just spun up last year we're uh, getting ready to spin up i think a wisconsin and maybe a uh, minnesota chapter depending if we can figure out the kinks of how this all works with our chapters uh, but and then and then here like yeah it's, and thanks for having us on like i i've like I said, I did my homework. I went and watched a couple episodes to see what the, the formats were and the context. And uh, I, I enjoyed them, like, even even uh, going through it all. Like, I think it's a great time. I wish you guys all the success. You guys are doing great work. Oh, well, thank like you. I said, like, yep. you, got, uh, you got vouched for by Mike, so you must be all right. Like I, <laughs> even if I had never met you, I'd be Well, I, have, I haven't met Mike yet. But I've heard a lot about him from yeah. Thomas, and I'm looking yeah. forward to the day that I do. Um, and I know that he's certainly made an impression on, on him. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, we thank you for your service and, uh, what you you're totally doing, worth it. what you're doing with the vets and, uh, you're, you know, and let's, uh, let's, uh, keep in touch and hopefully we can drive some interest, uh, to your website and to you guys and get you focused on what you're doing. And, uh, maybe this, uh, this pheasant hunt thing will be something that we can get together and that'd be fun. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Thank Take you. Care. Well, that was pretty, uh, that was great. I mean, that's uh, kind of one of those things we like to do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it goes together. I know you're kind of in some dates and looking at things yep. and it does get complicated this time of year for yeah. everybody, as you know, with, uh, with uh, the weekends and that kind of thing. But uh, so with anybody out there watching, obviously go to their website, check it out. If you care to help them out and donate, whatever, do it. Uh, it's a great, a great mission that they have. Um, we're going to have everything, um, all the descriptions on all our channels, yeah, all our, yeah. all our websites and Facebooks and, uh, and you'll be able to find them real easy. So and that goes to our plug too. If you, if you enjoy what we're doing and want to keep us uh, doing it, help us out, uh, go download some, some episodes, uh, let us know. We, we love feedback. Tell us what you like, uh, what, kind of topics maybe that you would like us to talk about mm -hmm. in the future uh, we've got some good guests that are lined up here in the next weeks uh, and so uh, we're always out there trying to find new content and make it more interesting for mm -hmm. everybody so until next time keep their nose in the wind you got it